Good morning. Welcome to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I am Regina Stanley, and I have the great pleasure of being the membership coordinator uh, for this congregation. To give you guys some idea of what we're all about, let me tell you about our mission. We say that here we embrace freedom, love wholeheartedly, grow in mind, body, and spirit, and add to the healing of the world. What we mean is that we celebrate the good things whenever we can, provide opportunities to strengthen relationships. We want to both to grow as individuals and to welcome more people into this community. And we want to help you in your personal dream to make the world and your life better. We advocate for human rights and for the care of this one earth. We take to heart our connection with the world. This land is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They and other nations were here long before the first European settlers came to this continent. We honor the Peoria people for who they were and for who they are today. I want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who's visiting us for the first time. 
It is no small effort to look around and venture into an established community. Thank you for finding us. See the ushers for name tags and information. Stay for coffee after the service if you are in person and for conversation and your own refreshments if you're online. Please set your devices to worship mode. If you need a little help. While our minister, Rev. Jennifer Innes, is visiting family in Texas, we have the pleasure of welcoming a pulpit guest, Babs Allen. Um, almost 20 years ago, Babs Allen attended a cups ritual at Unitarian Universalist Church of Bloomington Normal and found a spiritual home. This fall, she began her third year of seminary at United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities and is seeking ordination in the UU tradition. She has also facilitated large-scale, open, public pagan rituals for over 20 years. Babs is a self-professed worship superfan and feels most deeply connected to the divine when able to participate in worship with community, be it UU, pagan, or anything else. Let us give Babs a warm welcome. I have a few notes for today. Today's UU The Vote event is postcards. After service in Fellowship Hall, let's help get out the vote with UU The Vote. We will write postcards again after service to voters in South Carolina. Grab a cup of coffee and a snack and help us complete 150 postcards. We will not be taking any home. They all need to be completed today as they need to be mailed out by Tuesday. We are getting ready for our haunted forest on October 19th. We seek donations of candy and helpers for the many ways to staff our larger than life spooky trail. See Jesse Laughlin or the sign up in the foyer or on flock note. We will bring props and equipment down from the attic uh, after 1230 today. Next Sunday, Rev. Jennifer will explore human stories with the service called What If. All are welcome to come to church in costume and or bring a book that you love and talk with folks after service. Um, I also just want to take a minute and say a big thank you. Um, first to everybody who helped on Saturday morning with the entablature. Um, moving it from a member's house where it had been for many years. Um, and was from the original, um, our old uh, building. And it is now outside and you can go check that out. It's beautiful. Also, thank you to everybody who helped with the book sale in so many ways, donating books, volunteering your time. Um, if you could, we would really love if everybody could grab a box or two and find somewhere to donate them of the books that are left over. So before you leave, grab some books, take them with you. There's also still children's books. Please help yourselves to those. Okay, let us turn to worship with our opening hymn. Number 361, enter, rejoice, and come in in the gray hymnal if you wish to follow the music. Please rise in body and spirit and sing.
Good morning. <laughs> the poet Hafiz tells us, I sometimes forget that I was created for joy. My mind is too busy. My heart is too busy. For me to remember that I have been called to dance the sacred dance of life. I was created to smile, to love, to be lifted up, and to lift others up. O oh, sacred one, untangle my feet from all that ensnares. Free my soul that we might dance and that our dancing might be contagious. This morning, let us remember together how we are made for love and joy. Come, beloveds, let us worship together. I would like to invite up the McAlexander family to light the chalice. Good morning, I'm Sarah and this is Bowie. Thirsty by Gregory Paley. And so we gather from the ebb and flow of our lives, thirsty for connection to ourselves, thirsty for connection to others, thirsty for connection to the larger life. As we light this chalice, may all who gather here be filled, filled with joy and hope, filled with compassion and love. Here may we be filled so that we may pour ourselves out into the world. The Whisper of Our Souls by Reverend Scott Taylor. Come, let us listen with new ears. Do you hear it? That voice, so familiar, yet still far. Less a longing and more a knowing. A whisper of something inside that seems to have known us longer than we've known it. Come, let us listen together. Let us enter into our time of reflection. You are invited to come forward and light candles with the embrace of this circle of care. Let us enter into our music for meditation.
from Reverend Gary Kowalski. Maybe prayer means listening to the silences between the words, the vast, undifferentiated, and nameless wonder that underlies it all. Maybe prayer doesn't mean talking to God at all, but listening with the heart. Those who have ears, let them hear. This is the time for the joys and sorrows of the congregation. We offer condolences to Helen Martin for the death of her sister, Elaine Swua. Elaine died on October 8th, just before the arrival of Hurricane Milton. We also send condolences to Crystal Dugan, who has been attending for the past few months. She is struggling with the recent news of her mother's death. She asks for prayers during this time. Let us take one more moment in shared quiet. Let this circle expand to include all the names, milestones, joys, and sorrows that are with us, whether spoken or silent. Let us hold one more moment together and breathe. Amen, salam, shalom, and blessed be. I invite Jesse Laughlin forward for the story. Our story today is Layla's happiness by Maria Hadessa Tali and Ashley Korn. My name is Layla and I am seven years old. Layla means night beauty and I love the night. The dark sky is pretty. It's the color of dark purple plums. And the full moon, well, it is my favorite. It sits in the sky like Wish Flower's sister. If I could reach the moon, I'd blow on it and wish to play the trumpet well without ever having to practice. I think happiness is climbing a tree or wearing purple or eating spaghetti without a fork. Happiness is my dad when he talks about growing up in South Carolina. And my mom when she reads me poetry. Happiness is planting a tomato seed and watching it grow in my favorite place, the community garden down the block. In the garden, I can dance with a ladybug on my finger, see butterflies and chase my friend Juan. I feed chickens and give all the trees names. 
I can even pick vegetables to sell at our farmer's market. I think happiness is hearing Juan's parents laugh after they dance the salsa under a magnolia tree. And when the sea reaches into her pocket to give me a sand dollar. I think happiness is showing my mom the outer space flowers inside my kaleidoscope. That is what I think. Do you think so too? What is happiness to you? I wonder what makes you happy, what brings you joy. <laughs> I invite the kids and youth to join me for religious education. From Reverend Victoria Weinstein. We say in our church that the offering is a sacrament of the free church. What we mean by that is that we believe it is a blessing to be able to govern and support our religious community ourselves, to make possible by our generosity everything we dream of and do to live out our shared values. Every week, we lift up the spiritual value of generosity by taking an offering for the ministries of this church. Our plate, then, as it is passed among us, becomes filled with the evidence of that generosity. It is our harvest, gathered in every week, for what most nourishes us. We also share our abundance with our local community. Each week, we set aside half of the undesignated offering for our Share the Plate recipients. Our Share the Plate recipient this month is Product of the Project. Product of the, of the Project, or POP, uses three modules to help involve local urban youth and community development. The modules are designed to help develop character, accountability, positive relationships, financial literacy, and healthy lifestyles. Youth who give back to their communities develop better leadership skills learn the importance of helping, and gain important work ethics. Community participation helps youth grow to become empathetic citizens who can continue similar work as adults. Please indicate what your offering is for on the envelopes or go to the QR code in the order of service. Thank you for the gifts that support this congregation, its mission, and our community outreach. Will the ushers please come forward?
And now I'd like to invite Holly Green up for our reading. We Lived Happily During the War by Elia Kavinsky, published in his anthology, Deaf Republic. And when they bombed other people's houses, we protested, but not enough. We opposed them, but not enough. I was in, a, I was in my bed. Around my bed, America was falling. Invisible house by invisible house by invisible house. I took a chair outside and watched the sun. In the sixth month of a disastrous rain, in the house of money, in the street of money, in the city of money, in the country of money, our great country of money, we forgive us, lived happily during the war. The next reading is an excerpt from The Comfort of Crows, A Backyard Year by Margaret Renkel. I refuse to quell this joy. It's possible to understand what invasive species are doing in the woods and still feel the leaping heart of joy in the presence of greenness. It's entirely possible to exult in bird song and miniature flowers peeking out from the dead leaves of autumn. In this troubled world, it would be a crime to snuff out any flicker of happiness that somehow flames up into life. We are creatures built for joy. At the very saddest funerals, we can hear a funny story about our lost beloved, and God help us, we laugh. We can stagger out of an appointment where a person in a white coat has given us the news we think we cannot bear to hear. And still we smile at the baby in the checkout line, clapping her chubby hands at the balloons by the cash register, or kicking her feet in pleasure at the sight of a stranger's smile. This is who we are. The very best of who we are. The world is burning. And there is no time to put down the water buckets. For just an hour, put down the water buckets anyway. Take your cue from the bluebirds who have no faith in the future, but who build the future nonetheless, leaf by leaf, straw by straw, shaping them into the roundness of the world. Will you take a breath with me? <sighs> mm. Ilya Kaminsky wrote the poem, and we lived happily during the war in 2006, and it is the opening poem to his anthology, Deaf Republic. That book is not just a collection of poems, but a longer narrative told through poems about a village where a deaf child is shot by soldiers and the people of the village decide to no longer listen as their response to this crime. Kaminsky is a deaf person and uses deafness as a method of resistance and response to oppression. However, he begins this work not with the immediate telling of the story, but with this poem 
that calls us to reflect on the way that people continue to live happily while horrible things are happening to others. I first read this poem while on vacation with my two best friends in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, which if you didn't know, is like a whole testament to uh, capitalism, colonialism, and whiteness. <laughs> and I immediately felt like I had been slapped in the face. And yet, it drew me in because I am often filled with guilt about what I should be doing, could be doing, to protest, to rectify, to work towards, to basically do anything other than living happily. Those aren't nice feelings, are they? And they're also feelings that can be a kind of trap. Mea culpa, mea culpa, beating one's chest and begging forgiveness can be a way to actually avoid the real situation. This very real situation we find ourselves in today with the genocide taking place in Gaza and 11 other places in the world. With anti-trans legislation rising in the United States, with school shootings being commonplace, with one of the political parties listing out in a document their intention to dismantle the federal government piece by piece, with a shooting at a political rally, leaving two dead and three injured, including a former president of the United States, and two major hurricanes in one month, and these are only a few of the examples that I could name. This is not the time to fall over and beg forgiveness for what we have not done. Feel those feelings. Absolutely feel those feelings. But also, maybe get used to that discomfort. And move past it. We must not get mired in guilt. We must get active in working for change. We must find our method of responding to these crises and work together to overcome. And yet, and yet, we also have to have happiness in our lives, to live with joy, to have moments where we are not focused on all the horrors of the world around us, like Hafiz said, to find our feet in this sacred dance. There are so many things to be happy about. So many things that can bring us joy. There are new puppies and breakfast with old friends. There are northern lights and spectacular sunrises. There's the way the air feels different as the seasons change. There are birthdays and anniversaries and cake and pie and cobbler and ice cream, Christmas light displays and scented candles, birdsong in the morning and trees turning brilliant colors. Folks, there is coffee. Right? We could make an endless list of joy that is to be found in this world. We cannot be continuous in our confrontation of systems of oppression and in combating the, the things that are happening in our own country. As has been said many times, this is a marathon and not a sprint. However, honestly, it feels more like an ultra marathon at this point instead of a standard one. And while those who participate in those races push their bodies to extreme limits, we don't have to do that. We can take breaks and care for ourselves. I would go so far as to say we must do that. We must at times allow ourselves to take a chair outside and watch the sun. We must remember that joy is an act of resistance in a world that wants us 
feet down. We must remember, as Margaret Renkel has said in our second reading today, that we are creatures built for joy. These two concepts are not diametrically opposed, not allowing ourselves to be complacent and also living happily and joyfully. My personal favorite catchphrase is from an old El Paso commercial, and it's why not both? Why not? Why not? both. In writing up the little blurb for today's service, a few weeks ago, I asked some questions in there. Would it feel different if we approached things from from a place of love and joy rather than a place of anger and fear? What if we made all justice work a celebration? What if we could affect change with the power of our love? How would that feel, friends, if we came at problems, these big, seemingly insurmountable problems from a place of love and joy? Can you even envision that? Would you try with me? Will you take a moment here and maybe just take a breath? (sighs) And consider about moving through a conflict, any conflict at all in your imagination. Anyone, consider moving through that with love. With love for yourself and the other party with love, with deep grace and compassion for yourself and the other party. What does that look like in your mind? Does that feel different in your body? Now, just imagine letting joy take the wheel in problem solving. What if negotiations were a party? How about a dance battle to settle disputes? A sing-off, laughter. How does that look in your mind? Where is that joy in your body when you consider that? When I did this exercise, it was odd. Right? Like, that's, that's a weird thing. And obviously, this is an exercise in imagining something being taken to the extreme. However, uh, I have to tell you that in my mind's eye, the vision of a conga line dancing through the floor of the UN was pretty hilarious. And I think it's worth it to imagine it in the extreme, to place that hilarity in our bodies, and note it, because it's important to know how to return to it, especially when we are in conflict or organizing to make change or to lift up an issue. And what if we made all justice work a celebration, a party, This idea is living into being in the Becoming America Fund, which is part of the Pop Culture Collaborative's effort to further their vision of creating a country that has yet to be born. This fund supports actions like Joy to the Polls, which I couldn't even, I love that name, Joy to the Polls, which is a group dedicated to making voting a celebration. The founders and and Sorry, particularly, they do this in locations where voting might be suppressed. The founders of Joy to the Polls were also involved in founding the Resistance Revival Chorus, which if you haven't seen, uh, look them up. They are amazing. They could see that embracing joy held such great power. Co-founder Paula Mendoza says that as opposed to organizing out of anger, 
When you organize out of love, the feeling is expansive. It allows you to keep on growing. Joy is the same. It gives you strength. It is abundant in nature. We saw that we can list so many things that are joyful. It is abundant. Yes, we can move in this work in a spirit of love together with joy and laughter and celebration. The last question. What if we could affect change with the force of our love? That's already answered. And the answer is yes, because we can. It's possible and it happens every single day in each and every one of your lives. Love is transformative. Your love is transformative and such a force for good in this world. I'm going to say that again. Your love, you, your love is transformative and such a force for good in this world. Hold that, beloveds, for just a moment with me. Take a breath into knowing how transformative your love is in this world. Ursula Wolf Wolf Roca, an educator and activist in Oregon, says it can be overwhelming to witness, experience, take in all the injustices of the moment. The good news is that they're all connected. So if your little corner of work involves pulling at just one of those threads, you're helping unravel the whole damn cloth. Yep. I will go on to add that if you are doing your little corner of work with love, that cloth unravels faster and with more ease. Are you filling out a postcard to remind people to vote? Are you collecting supplies for those affected by the hurricanes? Are you knitting hats for unhoused people for the winter months? Are you speaking to a city council about education issues? Are you canvassing for a candidate Are you teaching a neighbor how to put their garden to bed for the winter? Are you smiling at a child in a checkout line? Wherever your efforts, whatever your efforts, they are making a difference. The love you are showing the world is making a difference and transforming it. You are the bluebirds, building a future leaf by leaf, straw by straw. You are shaping the roundness of the world with such love and joy. Ilya Kaminsky reminds us to never stop reflecting on our complicity, but it is up to us to decide how to respond after that. I think we need to be responding with love and joy. We most certainly need to be a part of the Bucket Brigade to combat our burning world. We most definitely need to put the bucket down and experience rest and happiness. But I ask you again, dear ones, why not both? Why not both? What if we sang while we put out the
Now please rise in body and spirit for our closing hymn, uh, number 327, Joy Thou Goddess. Light Goes Into the World by Peggy Clark. Knowing how quickly the flame of truth may be extinguished, how easily the chalice of fellowship broken, let us be vigilant in faith. Keep peace in our hearts and make care for one another. The watchword of our lives together, so our light goes out everywhere into the world. I snuck back here. Hi. I feel like a magician. I leave you with the words of Darcy Roke. There is too much hardship in this world to not find joy. Every day. There is too much injustice in this world to not right the balance every day. There is too much pain in this world to not heal every day. Each of us ministers to a weary world. Let us go forth now and do that which calls us to make this world more loving, more compassionate, and more filled with the grace of divine presence every day. Amen. Shalom. Blessed be.